Hello, and welcome to the St. Paul's Newman Center homily podcast for the second Sunday of Easter. I'm Tom Quinlivan. Today, Father Rob reflects on the story of Doubting Thomas and how the wounds and breath of Christ are breathed anew into our lives every day. As always, the readings for the weekend can be found at usccb.org. As we begin, let's take a moment in silence to connect ourselves in love to God and one another. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, a week later, Jesus' disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written, so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. The way that story ends is so simple, it's wonderful. The Gospel writer writing down and saying, I've written these stories so that you might come to believe. You know, here at St. Paul's Newman Center, we're in a student community, and many more than one student have finished a paper that way. There's much more that I could tell you, but I don't need to do that right now. What I've written here is probably going to be enough. Maybe a little humor on our Sunday together. I continue to be surprised by the way the scriptures speak anew. We call them inspired by the Holy Spirit. The breath of God has been breathed into these words for us. What an interesting image for us to be focusing on this weekend. Breath. In the midst of a disease that is known so well for robbing people of that very gift. Many that I've spoken with and and talked about the fear of contracting COVID and, and what that might mean, one of their greatest fears is that feeling of suffocation, of having breath robbed from us. If any of you have respiratory issues, you know what that's like an asthmatic who reaches for that inhaler in a moment of panic, that feeling of defenselessness. And yet we're invited this weekend to see the gift that that breath can offer us, to see the new life, the restoring energy that not only oxygen fills our bodies with, but even more, the breath of the Holy Spirit. Maybe you want to take a few minutes now or after we've spent our time together to just breathe. To focus on that gift, to sit quietly and stilly, to breathe in deeply, and then to breathe out your worries, to breathe out the fear, to breathe out the concern, and then again to breathe in the gift of peace, to invite the Holy Spirit to fill your lungs, to fill your body, to fill your life, to fill your family with the promise of hope that Jesus offers this weekend. 
the other obvious image, a group of disciples gathered together in a room with locked doors. The doors may or may not be literally locked on your house right now, but it probably feels that way. No one able to come that's not a part of your family, only going out when necessary. Well, the fear might have been of persecution and of crucifixion for those first disciples. It was a matter of life and death. It's no different for you or me. But the good news is what happens in the midst of that fear, that not even a locked door can keep Jesus out. Not even the greatest amount of isolation or quarantine can keep the power of the Holy Spirit from us. And it seems pretty clear that Holy Spirit wants to do one thing and one thing alone. Give us the gift of peace. To come in with those wounded hands and wounded side. And in fact, it's almost amazing that the only thing that seems to be recognizable about the resurrected Christ are the wounds. To come into the midst and not to want to talk about what happened in the past. Not to rehash all the wrongs that had taken place. But to simply say, let's move forward. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And then he breathed on them. He breathed on them new life. He reinfuses the breath of life into the constricted lungs of that first believing community. He releases them from the fear that choked their ability to breathe together and to live fully God's mission. As I mentioned, the peace of Jesus does not ignore the brutality of what happened. In fact, he comes to bring new life to that. The peace that Jesus brings recognizes full well the horror of what has taken place. But the peace results from the willingness to enter into a process of healing, forgiveness, and reconciliation rather than retribution or retaliatory, retaliatory violence. An ability to see the wounds differently, not as something that needed to be avenged, but as something that Christ was already to heal with peace and his spirit, enables the disciples to let their fear give way to joy. I'm guessing that if you've been in a home with more than two people for this extended period of time, there have been a lot of opportunities for reconciliation. There have been a lot of opportunities to get on the last nerve of one another and to have to say, I'm sorry. Do you know when you do that, that's the work of God? That asking for and receiving the gift of forgiveness in new life. So many ways to participate in that mission. What Jesus tells those first disciples is that you're, you are incredibly powerful that what you choose to do with your life has eternal consequences. And you can choose to breathe forgiveness and love and healing, or you can choose to breathe restriction and binding and confinement. What will we choose today? I don't even have to ask the question. I know what you want to choose. I know what I want to choose. And I know how difficult that is. I know that there is no way to move forward as a person of love and healing and grace without the power of God in my life. St. John Paul II invited us into the mystery of divine mercy this Sunday. I think the reason that that revelation was brought to our world in this time is because we still haven't figured it out. 2,000 years of trying to live the message of Jesus and we're still about retribution, about violence, about people having to pay the price. Jesus wants only one thing. Freedom in God's mercy. It seems so simple, but you know after these days how difficult that can be. So I invite you into that place of true freedom to again breathe in that gift of mercy, to breathe out the fear, and maybe to listen to the words more intently in our first reading today. It describes that early community in the Acts of the Apostles. It says, They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among, among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exaltation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all people. And every day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. It's true, we can't gather together in the temple every day like the apostles. 
but we certainly can be devoted to the breaking of the bread and the prayers. Maybe one other thing you want to do this week is to intentionally choose a meal in your household that you wish to see as Eucharistic. It's not the same, obviously, as gathering here around the bread of life and the presence of Jesus in the Eucharistic bread and wine, but it is suggestive of it. It is an opportunity to continue to hunger both for what we're not able to celebrate, but even more importantly, to be grateful for what we are to gather together and to look for the signs of awe and wonder in our midst, and to see this as a chance for our own faith to deepen, for that gift of salvation to take root. One thing that's a hallmark of the first community was the importance of communal life, of caring for each other and sharing what they had together. My friends, we're going to be called to do that in a big way in the coming months and years. The The statistics of unemployment are frightening. Maybe some of you at home are feeling that right now. If you are in need of things, please contact us at the Newman Center. Maybe others of you are in a position like I am, where we're financially secure and quite comfortable in our lives. It's time for us, at least for me, to start thinking about how I'm called to share that. During this month of April, and I hope to be able to say that every month that we're not able to be together, I'm in a position to be able to donate my entire salary back to St. Paul's Newman Center. I don't tell you that so that you say, oh, look at how amazing our pastor is, far from it. But because that was a tough decision. There's a lot of things I'd like to do with that money right now. I have to be honest, one of those things that keeps me in this moment is to say, well, what if I bought that? Well, what if I had this? Well, at least it would make this time more enjoyable. I say, I'm not going to do that because there's someone who needs this more than I do. If you're in that position, please start to pray together as a family about how God might be using you as a holy dispensary of God's financial gifts to our sisters and brothers who are in need. I also just want to share with you the way your parish family will be communicating moving forward, knowing that most of us are receiving an abundance of emails. We want to try to minimize that in number and maximize communication and effectiveness. So every Saturday, you will be receiving an email at that normal time that the bulletin was delivered. The email will contain links to the homily, as well as a list of all the activities and opportunities to gather and to pray together during the coming week. One of the things that we are interested in seeing if it would be valuable to you is to pair families or individuals or households together to experience Sunday faith sharing or during the week reflecting on the gospel. So you'll see that in the link coming out this weekend. If you're longing for a little human connection or maybe for some human connection different than the people that you're cooped up with. This is a great way for our parish family to increase the bonds of love together with one another. As always, if you want to receive those electronic communications, go to the website, newmancenter.org, and click on that button at the top, asking to receive more information, and you will. Remember the gift of peace, God's great shalom. Take that breath in, breathe out, and welcome the love of God into your heart. Thank you all for joining us in prayer again today. Be sure to check out the Song Spotlight for this weekend. On this week's show, I interview my wife, Chelsea Quinlevin, about her favorite song and what it's really like to be cooped up in an apartment with me. The link can be found in the description of this video. To make your weekly contribution or to donate to St. Paul's, you can visit newmancenter.org donate. Until next week, peace, God bless, and be well.